Hey, what's up? I'm back. <laughs> Last week, someone um, linked an article on Facebook to a really bad review of Wolfgang Tillmans' retrospective at the MoMA in New York. And I like art criticism, especially when it's actually critical uh, and so well written. Uh, I'm linking the article down below for anyone that might be interested. So I don't necessarily agree with most of the author's points, but I realize that even though I have been following Tillmans' work for more than a decade now, I have pretty much only paid attention to his really old stuff. So I decided to engage with something that was not shot in the 90s. For those of you that are not familiar with Wolfgang Tillmans, you should go and check out his work. Um, he's a German photographer born in 1968. He has been documenting the people, places, still lives and landscapes around him since the 80s. It is very difficult to define his style. He's an outlier in many ways, but I guess most of his photos look very natural and vibrant. They are smooth and, and constrained. Um, to be perfectly honest, the best way I can find to describe them is that they kind of look the way the world looks after a really deep meditation or a really good sleep. He has also dabbled in many forms of abstract photography and also makes electronic music. Yeah, he's that kind of person. Um, just really creative. I went through his book, Vespa Digital Fruit Logistica, which was shot in 2012. You can actually download the PDFs of many of his books from his website, which is great because a lot of them have been sold out for a really long time, which shouldn't be surprising to <laughs> any of you because that's how photography books work, right? They have really notoriously short print runs and they pivot on scarcity. Anyway, the body of work is disappointing in some ways, but really rewarding in some others. So let's concentrate on the positives first. The most obvious aspect to comment on, I think, is number one, the subject matter. The book focuses on two fairs, Fespa Digital that was held in Barcelona in 2012, like I said earlier, and Fruit Logistica held in Berlin. The main focus of these fairs are digital printing and everything fruit related respectively, like packaging and genetic manipulation of fruits. Both seem quite niche events for a photographer to find universal narratives that could touch the average consumer of art photography. I have been to a few similar fairs in my day and they were never pleasant experiences. Most of these kind of events are held in generic spaces that can be repurposed every season and subdivided with equally generic makeshift walls. There's hardly any consideration for lighting or style and the way each stall competes for attention with each other is so overt that they go from being uninteresting to just simply sad. So how is this choice of subject matter a positive, you might be asking? Tillmans' determination to photograph edit and sequence these images and believe in the project from inception to print is quite admirable, I think. It's way too easy to dismiss the whole thing as a blunder just because one is unable to engage with the project. But in fact, it is in the very essence of good photography, not only to find beauty, but also interest in the ordinary or the conventionally ugly. Most people would be either repelled by or uninterested in the subject matter, but also seduced by how Tillmans makes it his own and imbues his own signature in the images, which leads me to the second point. Number two, the way Tillmans deals with form. Whether it is with his sense of humor or his talent to turn the very technical precision of photography into an instrument of abstraction, Tillmans has a signature that is very recognizable, but also very elusive and detached in equal measure. Uh, I've seen it adopted in both galleries and on screen curatorships. What I haven't seen from his imitators is how cohesive he can be within his seemingly haphazard style and how in fact there is a healthy dose of rigor to his sequencing, intentional or not, right? That's something that we will never know. Unfortunately, that is where the positives end for me. The negatives are a bit more subjective, so you might want to take them with a pinch of salt. Number one, 
how detached it all is. I know it seems like a cop-out for me to mention the detachment or the formal detachment as a pro and now as a con, but there is nuance to this distinction. Tillman's photographic voice isn't dominated by a sense of intimacy, the way, you know, Sally Mansis or Antoine de Gattas or Latoya Ruby Frasers. This is in and of itself not a negative, but rather an integral part of where he decides to draw the line between him and his subject. I'm not saying that he's unable to represent intimacy. In fact, he does it much better than many photographers that profess to be empathetic in their approach. It is precisely because his bodies of work seem detached as a whole that the morsels of intimacy we get are so much more striking and meaningful. Fespa Digital Fruit Logistica lacks any of this closeness, which largely shuts the project from having a defined opinion about the subject matter. The flavor of the month for way too long <laughs> when it comes to art photography has been, you know, this work asks more questions than it answers or some fluff along those lines. But even as a survey of surfaces and conventions of engagement in a realm so antithetical to the art world, the lack of close-ups or even macros um, really undermines the breadth that can be possible with this subject matter. Number two how digital it all looks. It's way too easy to deem digital imagery as the new normal, as some kind of baseline in comparison with which all analog image making is some kind of deviation. This way of thinking about the medium limits its expressive potential, though. The choice of technology can be individual to each image, and its lighting or amount of detail, color, contrast ratio, and the way we decide to articulate it, like for example, high or low key, even when our choice of technology might yield the most apt technical results, this does not mean that the photograph will be the best fit for a body of work. Sometimes the quote unquote wrong way of doing something is just the perfect approach, which makes photography such an exciting medium to work with, right? I don't think Tillman's choice was the most expressive for this book, in this given decade. A lot of image makers that created strong work using analog cameras keep on photographing the same way with digital cameras. And unfortunately, the technology is not as forgiving with exposure or dynamic range. Overexposure, which might have looked milky and dreamy in color negative, looks like a mistake when shot digitally. While this can be ameliorated with image grading, it doesn't look like Tillmans did much of that in this particular project. The digitalness, is that even a word, of the book is even worsened by the resolution at which the PDFs have been uploaded to his website. I'd be genuinely curious to see if the print version differs much on how it feels. Um, at least I'm sure I'm not gonna get any pixelated pictures. I'm sure he's using a really good digital camera. Uh, but th yeah, they did look pixelated on my iPad. We end up with a body of work that on the surface kind of looks like snapshots straight out of a phone. Um, and I won't accept the idea that perhaps that is what he intended. Number three, parts of the sequencing. Roughly speaking, the book is organized with images of Fespa Digital, that is to say the Global Printing Expo, to the left, and Fruit Logistica to the right. This arrangement inevitably makes us compare both fairs. Each time I went through the book, I tried to draw an opinion, whether ethical, aesthetic, or political, but I wasn't able to follow any line of thought. The sequencing seems purely led by formal properties of the images and not much else. The way the images are cropped is sometimes linked to the subject matter. For example, it makes sense that an image of a print being made is half complete, you know, as some kind of meta commentary. But then Tillmans repeats it at least six more times in a tired tautological exercise. I've never really understood the superimposition of images on top of each other, especially when done so sporadically and haphazardly. It just kind of seems to be a way to divert the eye or entertain it the way magazines do. Why would you conceal part of an image only to fully reveal it later? I, I can understand like this practice when the work itself deals with erasure, censorship or concealment as larger subjects, but not so much here. Finally, repeating these three images seems a bit lazy I can understand how the cover of a photo book reappears within the book. Say, for example, Mark Steinmetz does that quite poetically and beautifully. 
This device really works with a really strong narrative arc, like a scene of a movie, you know, used for the poster, or even a painting in the cover of a novel. Anyway, I still would recommend you to go to his website and take a look at the book. You know, each photography book is a world in itself and can be interpreted in many different ways by a different set of eyes. Um, and even when you revisit it, you might get something different. Like, subscribe, comment and all that. Thank you.